what is up guys, Stu here. I was lucky enough to catch an early screening of Brawl in Cell Block 99 at this year's London Film Festival, so let's talk about that shit. So Brawl in Cell Block 99 is the latest film from S. Craig Zala, who brought us more recently a film called Bone Tomahawk, and he's a director who's known uh, for kind of... Not shying away from sewing some shit in his film. He's, uh, he's, a lot of brutal shit happens in his films. There was that one kind of skinning scene that went kind of viral uh, from Bone Tomahawk. And something tells me there's going to be a few more scenes like this going around the internet from this one. And this one he's moved away from the western and into the kind of crime prison thriller film and he's recruited Vince Vaughn here to tell the story of a guy who is for whatever reason thrown into jail and he has to basically find and kill someone in jail to help some people outside of jail and usually I simplify down uh, storyline so that I don't spoil too much for you guys but it really is that simple here that that is basically the entire storyline here and it's uh it, it's a lot of things this film but I, I liked it I thought it was really solid so as I said Vince Vaughn stars in the film as this kind of skinhead nut job it's put in jail, and he, this dude is just a machine. He's an all-out machine here. You don't want to be fucking with Vince Vaughn in this film. Which isn't really anything I thought I'd be stood here and saying, uh, which is great. Vince Vaughn's one of those guys that it's easy to forget. He, he's got acting chops on him. He can do some solid work when he needs to. And it's a shame that for a large portion of his career, he sort of got typecast in that kind of buddy comedy film shtick he had going. It, it, it was all right in a few points. But it's nice to see him stepping back into some more kind of edgy and serious roles. It was nice to see him pop up in Hacksaw Ridge as the guy that shouts a lot. But he kind of goes a little bit further in that he's leading the entire film and he's this very kind of quiet, broody, skinhead guy that you just don't want to be fucking with. But honestly, he smashed it here. I thought it was really great and he did a surprisingly good job of convincing me that he is this kind of big fuck off huge tank that I don't want to go anywhere near because that's not what Vince Vaughn has ever been to me. Okay, if, if you were sat watching the fucking Wedding Crashes when it came out with me, and you turned to me and you were like, hey, you know what would be cool um, if we took if we took that guy and we put him in a film where he basically just beats the shit out of people, he's a skinhead, he's a nut job, and he's in jail. Oh, that would that would be cool. I'd be like, um, pff, you, uh, you bloody loony. No. But we're here now, it's 2017, that shit is a thing that happened in a film I saw. Bloody bonkers. But the direction from S. Craig Zala as well is on the whole very solid. It's a good looking film in terms of its visuals and cinematography. It's well shot so everything looks and works as I think it needed to to get this simple story across. But I think it's continuing to show that he's a director that understands how to create tension. It's a sort of approach to storytelling where things are being layered on brick by brick and eventually you start to kind of feel the weight of all of that and then it just kind of all comes fucking tumbling down at the end in a good way because the climax of this film is is crazy <laughs> it, it gets pretty wild this one and I think it worked towards that climax quite well it starts off quite slow I wasn't entirely sure where it was going and it lays those essential groundworks to the storyline and I think it does a good job of taking time to explain certain story elements but without going too far into that that when it starts to divert from that you feel like it was a wasted opportunity. I almost admire the fact that it took such a simplistic approach to the storytelling of it that meant that when you get to the final act of the film it can just sort of go all out and it does go all out. As soon as old Vincey boy gets into prison and then you sort of click okay that's what this film's gonna be about now it doesn't really let up from there onwards. It, it's very brutal. Probably the most brutal film I've seen in the cinema for a long time. It's snapping dudes' arms, breaking their legs, scraping their faces off. And it is the most times I've seen an audience around me go, Oh, fuck! Oh! 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 oh. Not because they're scared, but because it's just, Whoa! Fuck! That's a bit much. And I think from that, it's inevitably going to get a lot of critique from people saying it's glorifying violence and gore and it's just violence for the sake of violence. And I don't necessarily think I disagree entirely with that in the sense that clearly violence is a very big part of this film. But I think it's too easy to be like, oh, gross, violence, fuck this shit. That's, oh. Oh, give me Ryan Gosling. It's a brutal film. Yes, it's absolutely supposed to be shocking and visceral and extreme. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I completely understand why people wouldn't like it, but there's definitely a market for this shit. So if you're someone that enjoys watching films and make you go, oh, fuck, that was gross. Let's keep watching. Then you're going to find enjoyment in this one. Also, when it comes to the violence, I enjoyed watching the practical effects that this film uses. I mean, the actual makeup and effects on some of the kills in this film are 
really, really quite impressive. At one point, he pulls up a guy's head and he uh, just has no face. I definitely think there's this weird satisfaction now of seeing special effects and makeups done in such an effective way for gruesome stuff. I'm not a serial killer, I promise. But I also thought in terms of directing the action and the violence in this film, it handled that very well. There's one point where he goes into this fight sequence and it sets it up like it's going to become this big kind of one-on-one -on -one fight sequence. And I was very worried how it would do that but i'm very happy it just it cut to this wide shot and it was just vince vaughn and this other dude throwing down for about 30 seconds before it cut and i actually thought to myself yes thank you thank you for showing us that wide shot that that is a shot that this fight sequence needed to get me on board it's effective in making you feel like vince vaughn is actually throwing down on these dudes but it does make it feel like the sort of film which i enjoy watching and in the moment i was having a good time but afterwards, I don't know, it doesn't really linger with me, make me think about much else. I also think that everyone outside of Vince Vaughn in the film didn't do an incredible job. Maybe it's because I was so focused on how well Vince Vaughn was doing. But it just felt like side characters would pop in. I, they never really convinced me. A lot of the bad guys in the film are just kind of like, oh, I'm the bad guy, here I am, now I'm going to get beaten up. And I think it would have benefited from having much more of a realistic cast of side characters around him. And there's also elements of sound design which bugged me. It's a small gripe, but in the fight sequences, it's very clear that they've dubbed over a lot of the sound effects of Vince Vaughn just laying into people in that kind of big, loud, thump way, which does add a lot of weight to the choreography in the film and is effective overall. But there are a few moments where I think it went a little bit too far and I was like, okay... I get it, we're watching this big dude throw down on people. You don't need to go so overboard on the sound effects here. But yeah, overall, I think it's a really solid film. I think it's definitely worth checking out. I don't think it's going to be for everyone. I can see a lot of people being like, oh, what the fuck? But I think it's effective in doing what it wanted to do. It is an enjoyable experience in that weird kind of I don't want to be watching this, but I am kind of way. It's definitely not going to be this big, amazing film that's going to give you a profound new look on life. But I think it does what it says on the tin, and I enjoyed it. So I'm going to go ahead and give Brawl and Cell Block 99 a very solid little four stars. Definitely try and see this one in as packed a theatre as you can, because it's no doubt going to be an enjoyable experience just to watch people's reactions. <laughs> but what about you guys? Have you seen Brawl and Cell Block 99 yet? I know it's just come out here over in the UK, and it's going on video on demand at the moment this weekend. So if you get a chance to check it out, I'd love to know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. That would be amazing. And as usual, if you liked your view and you want to see me talk about more shit, please consider clicking subscribe. It would really help me out, and it would make you a 10 out of 10 human being. So please do that. That'd be nice. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers. Jason Bateman. Surprise. Me again. You know how this goes at this point. I'm just going to move to the side. And over there, just, just here, is a nice little playlist filled with other reviews from the film festival this year. I saw about 30 films overall, so it's going to start filling up big time. If you want to see my thoughts on any of the films from the festival, click on there, have a scroll through. It's going to get big. There's a dirty joke here, and it's taking all my willpower not to make it. I'm just going to walk out.